find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sings. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug when I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 56. We got a special one for you here this week. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, broadcasting live from Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Do a little bit of video production here around around town uh, for some of the groups in uh, a little bit over in Ohio. We've been around. We've been doing some stuff, some documentary work, PittsburghWrestling.com if you want to check any of that out. And, of course, with me is my compatriot in the indie wrestling scene, uh, fellow podcaster and announcer, Ring sign announcer, commentator down at Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, in the uh, in the Texas area. Uh, yeah, it's a big area. I know. I keep doing that. You know, it's, it's <laughs> it, it, own, it, you're not wrong. It's it it's, it's own area. freaking country down there. Let's be honest here. Eamon Payton at Eamon to please on the Twitters. How you doing this week, sir? I'm doing fantastic, sir. Uh, this big things coming up in the indie, indie wrestling world. I like for me at least, but I'm sure all around that I'm sure we'll talk to you and. Uh, I know we got a great uh, interview on hand as well, yes, so uh, I think it'll be a good show. Oh, um, they're excited. all great interviews. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> let's knock all the 55 other people that have been on our show before. No, no, no. Hey, Dabrowski's been on twice. Forget him. Um, sure. Anyways, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, hey, a little disclaimer. We did have a little – We uh, I did get a little bit of an indie wrestling rant on the Wrestling Mayhem show this week, episode uh, three, uh, 456. Uh, if you want to get into some of that during some of the email segment, uh, yeah, we got a little ranty. Um, yeah. I, I can't remember. I go into a blind rage like I do sometimes. Uh, so uh, I can't remember what it was about. If you want to check out some of that extended conversation here, uh, let me know if I get back into the rage during this show uh, on, on this one, Eamon. But anyways, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find this and so uh, so many other great, fine, fine podcasts talking about professional wrestling. And you can subscribe to many of the shows, including this, on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Uh, you can also drop us a line, your thoughts on indie wrestling on questions for people we have coming up on the show who should we get on the show let us know 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline you can leave us a voicemail or drop us a line to good time at wrestling good times at wrestling mayhem show.com big thanks intro by basic sickness at basic sickness.com you can get free music and videos right over there and of course uh follow wrestling mayhem show on facebook Google Plus and at Mayhem Show on Twitter. And join us live, live.sorgatronmedia.com Tuesday nights, about uh, around about 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, you can join us in the chat room and ask your questions live there as well. With us tonight, great guest. He's been um, um, here with us with the IWC for uh, I think well over a year. Uh, my my memory is always fuzzy on these kinds of things. Um, but uh, you may know him uh, if you're not in the area. You may know him from a, a little run, uh, something called ECW. I think you might have heard of uh, <laughs> that was on TV for a little bit. Uh, Colin Delaney, the extremely cute wrestler, is joining us tonight. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. You had so many things in that intro that I wanted to touch on, and I've lost most of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, mostly, mostly though, uh, I wanted to touch on, yes, please send them suggestions for guests so they don't have to have Joe Dombrowski on a third time. Oh. Well, yeah, let's be honest here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Joe's great. Joe, Joe's, Joe knows so much, and, and hey, he's a professional talker, so, so it's, easy. It's, like, it's like a night off for us. I know. I just, I just, you said with Dombrowski's lights, I was like, whoa, man. And I wanted to rip Dombrowski a little bit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, you, you've been on you've been on the mic with the uh, uh, Dabrowski a little bit, doing commentary with IWC. I know I've witnessed. Yes, yes, I love doing commentary. Uh, also, I'm sure Dabrowski has already tweeted at me about uh, me shit talking him right now. But yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I love commentary. I actually broke into the wrestling business as uh, a 14, 15 year old color commentator. Oh, jeez. Mm. So you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys share that passion. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, and I mean, I had my, I've had my days doing commentary over at Chikara Pro back in the day, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, I did an entire two CWI pay per view not too long ago. So I, uh, I got some, I got some commentary cred. It's actually uh, one of my favorite things to do. If I wasn't wrestling, I would definitely take up the commentating thing. 
Awesome, awesome. Well, let's get so so. Obviously, you you started at a young young age in the business in, in some capacity here. Um, we like to take a look back and say, you know, what got you into it? What is your earliest memory of of, of experiencing of, of viewing even uh, professional wrestling? What got you into the, the checking out the biz in the first place? Uh, well, I am twenty eight years old. So when I was a kid. Uh, wrestling was still on uh, Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching wrestling Saturday afternoon after cartoons, even before I could read. I remember my older brother having to read the names on the screen and tell me who's who's on and what's going on. And I mean, uh, I've watched wrestling for as long as I can remember. I remember the first uh, Monday Night Raw and begging my parents to let me stay up a little bit later that night so I could watch Monday Night Raw. Nice, nice. And, and did that just transition into, uh, like, did you find the local indie, or uh, you know, how did that kind of move over? No, I mean, yeah, I guess eventually I found a local indie. I found a local indie uh, around 1999, 2000, uh, and it was called New Millennium Wrestling. I'm sure there was a hundred of those around the year 2000. <laughs> uh, but the main event on the first one was uh, Reckless Youth against Don Montoya, so... Uh, sweet old school indie card match that probably happened everywhere. Uh, Reckless Youth comes up a lot in the old indie uh, conversation. Unfortunately, I I didn't get into indies myself until probably about 2007, so I missed I think probably a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, no, and I mean at that point, uh, like I said, we're talking like 99, 2000. So I was still like, you know, I was I was a kid, but I I knew I I never wanted to be anything but a professional wrestler my entire life. So mm-hmm. even at like 13, 12 years old, I was helping out with the ring, you know, setting up, taking down rings. Uh, so like transitioning from like going in from a young age to, to sort of training, um, the, the, obviously starting very young as you did, did that just sort of come naturally as far as, you know, actually going to a school and, and, and getting in the ring and training? Uh, yeah, uh, my parents wouldn't let me start until I was 16. But, I mean, that's uh, about uh, – I thought it was fair, I guess. <laughs> uh, I was still working with all the local independent places around pretty much from an earlier age because, like I said, I, I commentated. I would do ring announcing. Uh, I would do whatever I could to be involved. I mean, I hopped in the car with guys and would travel three hours just to, to go to the show to, you know – uh, do whatever I could. So I started training at around 16 years old, found a local wrestling school, uh, and it's actually the same school that I uh, I teach at now. Awesome. Uh, and, like, going through, like, I guess the bumps and, and, and the actual training, uh, I, I mean, obviously it's a difficult thing to get into, but, but did you sort of feel the effects of that sort of very early on? I don't know. I think I caught on a bit quicker than others because I was around it so mm-hmm. much. Uh, I I found, you know, I was a, a bit of a quicker learner than everyone else because, like I said, I was on the road with these guys. I'd watch, I would watch what they did. I'd watch them train. You know, uh, even before I started uh, training or, or going to independent shows, I had my backyard wrestling phase. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Luke Harper was in my backyard wrestling, uh, (laughs) whatever you would call it. So, I mean, me and him came up together, and he's quite a bit older than me. Uh, (laughs) I like to make reference to him being old as much as I can. Uh, But So I watched him go through a lot of it, and I watched him take the bumps first, and him do a lot of the moves first, and him uh, learn how to do a bunch of things first. So I, I naturally picked it up a bit quicker when I started. Nice, nice. I, that must have been the, well, that's, a, that, that's like the, the backyard to the stars right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Other than like uh, the Hardys and that North Carolina uh, backyard wrestling group coming up into, uh, you know, TV and such, I think I think me and uh, Big Brody got it covered. Were you guys uh, kind of in that area? It, it, it seems like it, it, you were kind of in that area, kind of inspired by the, uh, the, the Mick Foley kind of backyard tape that was a uh, uh, part of WWE around then? Yeah, but we were like goofy backyard. Okay. We weren't hitting each other with light tubes. We weren't uh, mm-hmm. going through tables. We were we were kind of like uh I don't know. We were goofier. We would we would 
slam each other on the cardboard boxes like really lightly because we didn't want to hurt each other or hit each other with the, I don't know foam pool noodles. You know, we weren't uh, not that hard. Definitely not the best of backyard tapes that uh, were going around when I was younger. Right, right. Certainly, the, not not the Matt Cross stuff. Right. <laughs> There's another no, backyard guy no. actually. Nothing so. wrong with that. No, no, no. Certainly, just, we were very we were very safe, very careful, and very just like. We loved wrestling and we had fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's what hey, that's what matters. Um, kind of moving on a little bit. Uh, you, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, Chikara and stuff. Actually, my first encounter with you, um, I, not that I ever expect you to remember this, but uh, uh, was a uh, fan clave in Chikara, uh, King of Trios one year. I remember there was a Chikara Yoki. Um, you seem to be into the karaoke, I have to point out. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I do love me some karaoke. I, I think at one a, time you were climbing over the chairs and climbed over me to get to in your performance. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I I do believe all of that to be <laughs> to be very much so true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was that? Five, oh, eight? I feel like it was oh nine. Um, Could have been oh nine. Yeah. So it's it's right around then. Yeah. Uh, also, Turtle Wiener beating me in a uh, 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 Connect Four was interesting too. Um, but, um... <laughs> I would never admit that to anybody as long as I live. <laughs> I think he cheated. I'm pretty sure he cheated. Uh, I got him back. I got him he back. He had on the to have. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and he had that. He had the puppet at the time too, and uh, and I think it was the puppet was actually playing. So, but uh, no, it was like, that was a good time. So, I mean, what was that like working with Chikara? I mean, uh, I mean, we we kind of talk about Chikara a lot on the show as being the one of most interesting, most creative, most alternative kind of uh, groups out there, you know, and, uh, and and you seem to fit in very well with that. Sure. I enjoyed uh, a lot of my time at Chikara. It was where me and Jimmy, uh, my old partner, Jimmy Olsen, we were the Olsen twins. It was where we first really uh, got noticed a bit, mm-hmm. uh, where we first kind of got out there. So we had a great time. And I mean, back then it had an amazing roster of people. Uh, from all over the place, a lot of uh, great talent coming in from Canada, like the Super Smash Brothers were on all the time. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like we were coming down with Cloudy and Cheech and Brody and Hero was still there and Claudio and Sweeney and uh, very a very eclectic roster, a very cool roster. Nowadays, I feel like it's, uh, it's a bit more in-house than, uh, than it was back then. I don't know. I tried to watch the Chikara show uh, semi recently. Mm-hmm. The it wasn't. I don't know. I had fun while I was doing it, but watching it back, it's not necessarily for me. Interesting. Interesting. So it's, it's not your kind of product. No, no, and it, it was at a time. I, back when I did it, it was. It's a lot different, and it evolved. Uh, even as I was there, I could see it uh, evolving and changing. I mean. We had a lot more freedoms back when I first started there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we they would just be you know we'd have to do a little a quick promo segment and then we'd have a match. But I mean towards the end, it, you know the the sheet would have the promo pretty written out and pretty scripted, and and the match would have uh, instead of just like bullet points or what you want to get across, it would have a very uh, like sometimes like two or three paragraphs of what needed to be in there. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like the when I when we first started there, the fun was more natural, and then uh, later on it became less fun because it was kind of planned fun. It wasn't just it wasn't us having fun. It was it was planned fun. Mm-hmm. A, little, a little less spontaneous. What's that? A little less spontaneous then. Yeah, yeah, and we had a little bit more control over the fun and and over what we wanted to do as opposed to uh, one person's idea of fun. Mm-hmm. Certainly. And of course, as, as everybody knows, I think we're kind of in the right time period here. Uh, you know, you, everybody knows uh, your, your run and reference, of course, recently with IWC and, and your match with Tommy Dreamer. I want to get to in a little bit. Um, but uh, you had your time with WWE, the ECW brand at the time and uh, uh, forever long that was. Uh, what was it like returning to the Indies at that point? Um, I don't know. It was it was interesting. I wasn't gone that long, mm-hmm. is the thing. So it's not like, I don't know, it wasn't much of a return to the Indies. I was only gone eight months-ish. So it's, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't too big a jump for me. I enjoyed it. I was uh, definitely not uh, in fighting 
indie wrestling shape when I left WWE because mm-hmm. I don't think I wrestled a match more than uh, three minutes up there. I guess. Uh, it, so, it, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's fine. No, I was just going to say the transition was. I remember my first indie match back, and I was like, "Oh my god, how did I do this?" <laughs> And, 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 and looking up some stuff, uh, I, 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 I did see you did take on the Great Collie, and I have to ask this for a co-host on, on the Wrestling Mayhem show. How is the Great Collie? Um, how is the Great Collie? He's a very nice gentleman. Uh, he used to have a, a wonderful joke with me where he would say, "You call in me, Collie." <laughs> so, uh, that was very amusing. And I thought it was amusing too, um, but no, he's uh, he's enormous, mm-hmm. and uh, he can't help but be enormous. So he uh, he definitely literally knocked me out with the side of his hand. Wow! Uh, yeah, that match opens up with him just uh, teeing off on the top of my head with the side of his hand. But we don't realize is that his hand probably weighs about as much as a toaster of it. So him, a seven foot four human swinging a toaster oven at your head, is probably going to put you out, especially if you're five ten, 160 pounds. <laughs> we're, 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 we're playing the match back on the, on the video version and we're just like watching you stare at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stare, stare eye to nipple with him. <laughs> yeah, 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 we were, we're actually right at that point right now. <laughs> yep, um, yep. As, as the great Kelly's sweat is beating up into my mouth. No, you're calling this exactly as we're showing it. That's amazing. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, um, well, let's bring that up to, uh, of course, you know, just a few weeks ago, there was IWC's Reloaded, new owner of their Justin Plummer. Um, you had a match. Was this your first uh, match back with Tommy Dreamer uh, uh, since uh, WWE? It is. It is. Uh, so I guess that's seven years in the making or, or something like that. Yeah, no, it's the only time we... Uh, We've wrestled since WWE, since my last match in WWE, which was also an Extreme Rules match with Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I mean, it, what, how was it reconnecting with him? I mean, uh, obviously, it's been a few years. You've, you've, you've had to learn, learn so much uh, uh, since and uh, to get in there with uh, uh, such a uh, great legend like him. Yeah, we've seen each other a handful of times, so it's always great to see him. But uh, I really wanted to show him... Uh, you know, that I, how much I've progressed and how much I have learned. It was one of those things like, I don't know, I've been doing this 12 years now and I don't mm-hmm. often get really nervous, but I was really like very kind of nervous about this one because I really wanted to, to to show what I've learned. He's, uh, you know, like a, a bit of a, always a bit of a mentor and a father to me, you know. It wasn't just a TV angle. He was a... Uh, he took care of me while I was up there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, kind of still touched on IWC a, a, a moment here. Um, I, I thought you've been doing some really fun stuff over the last year. Uh, a, a more local guy, Keith Hot. Uh, you guys were the tag team of Hot, Hot and Cute. Um, it's been a lot of fun doing tag team champ, uh, being tag team champs here in the area with IWC. Um, uh, what was it like working with Keith? I love Keith. <laughs> I will always love Keith. He's, uh, I remember when they first paired me up with him. Uh, I don't think he was exactly what they were looking for at the time mm-hmm. when they were going to team me up with somebody. But uh, when I saw him and when I you know, saw what he could do and saw how uh, uh, just everything that Keith is, mm-hmm. uh, I was excited about it. And I always had a great time working with Keith. It was a, you know, look at him. Is there... Is, is there possibly a picture of him going out on right now? Yes, there I'm is right now. Actually, you're, you're stared down from when uh, the uh, hot, and, uh, hot and cute exploded uh, a couple months ago at Winter Takes All. He's adorable. <laughs> and he's a hugger. <laughs> he's a legitimate <laughs> hugger. Very, it's, it's tough to say anything else about him other than that he's adorable. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I mean, like I said on there, I, uh, I, I said in, in promos on Keith for IWC and, and, and after we broke up and... Uh, Either way, I will always love Keith. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He, he's he, he, he's a uh, you know for those who don't know Keith is um he's a he's a shorter guy and he's a little rotund, but I mean he doesn't move like he is. You know, he uh, looks he looks like the real life version of Paddington Bear, <laughs> <laughs> and he wears the bear hat too, so it really kind of fits, doesn't it? 
So I know that movie is out right now. There's a movie of it, a kids' movie. He needs to capitalize on that quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, he get he get the yellow hat on top of his bear yep. hat and do that. I mean, yeah. So because I know he does some other stuff in the area too, where he's doing a jester character and everything. Um, but yeah, yeah. He no, he needs a blue raincoat and he needs a yellow <laughs> like rain hat. And still do the dance. Still completely yeah, do the dance. It's fine. It's I think it would be wonderful. Nice, nice. Um, of course, uh, a lot of stuff coming up. I, you know, you, you got that. Tommy Dreamer, of course, is IWC champ uh, here locally. Uh, you know, got to mention that. Uh, you know, same night. You know, he was kind of the surprise entrant after the um, because they was a very random, uh, a randomizer uh, kind of thing going on uh, for the show for the kind of reboot of IWC under the new ownership. Um, we got Night of the Superstars coming up, um, and I know you're on promos talking about you, you should be in a running for that, and I think it could be really interesting for that. Um, I don't know. What do you, what do you expect? Uh, you think you're going to get that shot in Meadville? Uh, I don't know. I hope. So. I would hope so. I'm the Owen Hart of this situation, though, it seems. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I beat Bret Hart early in the card, and then he goes on to win the title. This, I, I mean... I just I would do- hope that I would hope that IWC is smarter than uh, '90s WWF, and uh, and <laughs> I would be the one to get the shot. Certainly, certainly. It's interesting. They also like in my mind putting Tommy Dreamer as Bret Hart in general is is, is yeah. <laughs> and, well, does that make uh, RJ City Yokozuna? Uh, he'd be Yoko. No, because he. So I, actually, I think Dalton would be Yoko, and <laughs> that and would RJ's make Luger. that would make uh, RJ's Luger now. No, that doesn't make it. Oh, hold on, hold on. RJ is more of a Paul Roma in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it works a Again, little. Again, dead right? on accurate. <laughs> <laughs> That all works. That all works for me. Um, Eamon, I think you've got the next question here. Uh, I kind of want to talk about, because uh, I think one of the big things, especially from your run after uh, your time in the WWE, uh, the, that people like to sort of bring up a lot is, is your transformation uh, in general. Um, it's, you know, amazing sort of looking at you and like the start of your career and how you look now and, and how, you know, the shape that you're in and, and the, you know, the style that you work now and stuff like that. Um, how has that transformation sort of been, uh, you know, from, you know, becoming who you are now as, as a wrestler? Um, I tell people a lot, uh, because people say, wow, I didn't recognize you. Wow. You look different. Well, I was a kid back then. So it's a, it's a bit different. I mean, I, I think I just grew up as a, as a man and as a person. Uh, I don't know a whole lot of people who look the same at 20 as they do, you know, approaching mm-hmm. 30. And I would hope that I don't either, but uh, <laughs> no, it, it's uh, uh, also in wrestling. I feel like uh, wrestling uh, changes almost daily. If, you know, uh, at least monthly or, or, or yearly, what's good and what works, it changes. It changes all the time in wrestling, and you always have to be ready to adapt and uh, and and get with what's working now. So I feel like I've done a, a pretty okay job so far, keeping uh, keeping with it or ahead of it or or you know on par with it. And I think that's uh, a lot of it, trying to keep with what's current and what's working. And 160 uh, pound me in bandages isn't working anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That only has a, uh, so much of a shelf life. Yeah, no, uh, and it, it it hurts uh, mm-hmm. being wrapped in those bandages. They used to bandage me up so tight I could barely breathe. I remember when I wrestled Miz and Morris in, in a handicap match. I think it was the, the last time I was real bandaged. But I had an arm bandage. I had a shoulder bandage. I had my ribs taped. I think I had my head taped, too. But they, the medical staff there does a bang-up job taping, but that does not leave much room to breathe. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I got in the ring, and they... I, ugh, I remember I just couldn't get what I couldn't wait to get it off. Yeah, yeah. Did they, did they, I'm trying to recall. Were you pretty much banished like through the end? Like you, you actually did do uh, kind of a hill turn towards the end on Tommy, if I recall right. Yeah, the con- <laughs> my continuity there is real weird. Yeah. I, I mean, I was not all the time. I did the I did the bandage thing, and then me and Tommy started a team, and then we feuded with Miz and Morrison, and then they went back to me kind of getting beat up by big guys and trying to get a contract. Mm -hmm. And then I turned on Tommy and went with Mark Henry 
So it like, and all this happened in eight months. Wow. Mm. No slow burn there. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was just one thing to the next thing to the next thing. Like I had, I had like a four year long career in like eight months. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of development. Um, it, well, it always was, uh, a, 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 you know, not that you were really had a hand in a lot of the other TV going on at the time, but ECW like really seemed like this weird experimental program that I guess is what we're supposed to have gotten with the NXT now. Um, like did, did, did it feel like, I don't know how to put this because I'm trying to remember exactly when you were there versus how things happened down there. Um, I mean, like, like, did, did it feel like it was kind of like that they knew where they were going with stuff or was it kind of different week to week? Um, I mean, I, they, I definitely don't feel like they knew where they were going with me really, but mm. how could they? I don't think they anticipated, uh, me coming on the scene and being a thing uh, really whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So like, I, I don't know. I don't think they thought, Hey, we're going to find some kid off the street who's going to be a, a, a focal point of our programming for eight months. So I don't really think they could have had a plan necessarily completely on, on a, on a lot of things. Um, I don't remember where I was going with that, but yeah, <laughs> as far as my end, I don't think they, they, they really could have had a plan. Uh, but I was there when it was like ECW, they had already done most of the ECW originals were kind of gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was kind of its own program. Like you were saying, kind of like, like what NXT is now developing guys, uh, like Kofi Kingston, I, I mean, Kofi debuted the same night, and uh, Evan Bourne debuted on ECW, and wow. uh, you know, Punk was a, a big. His breaking out was really on that ECW show, and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of guys. So, yeah, I guess it was kind of an early what they were do- what they're doing at NXT now. Certainly. Um, hey, I got a message uh, before this interview. Uh, I have to share. Okay. Um, it was from uh, um, Jock Sampson. I think you're familiar right. with him. Uh, he says, uh, tell Delaney I'm going to dick punch him. That's it? That's it. He's, I, you know, he's, a, he, he's a man of few words uh, that mean a lot. Um, and I think that no, was his No, no, no. Jock is a man of a lot of words <laughs> if you let him talk. So, uh, like, uh, just as we were just talking about it. Jock did a scaffold match right. this weekend. Right. I saw the video last night, and he's insane. He's a nut, and the, the night before, I was on a show with him in Dayton, where he was in a five-on-five barbed wire board match. And while we're while we're there, he's telling me about, oh man, I, you know, this is crazy. I don't, uh, uh, barbed wire. What is this barbed wire? I've also seen Jock Samson go through flaming tables. So <laughs> I, but he's all over the board. This he's man, a nut. this man has kicked has has kicked my uh, videographer at ringside in the dick. I what? believe it. Live Probably. at a show on his birthday. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Um, yeah. My, my question is: Is it any is, all, out of all those scenarios? Is it any more crazy than Jock Samson wrestling Buff Bagwell in a singles match? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I mean, some of the matches that I've seen Jock Samson in, uh, like him and Tracy Smothers against Colt Cabana and Cliff mm-hmm. Compton. Oh, jeez! What a crazy just. A semblance of people. That, wow. <laughs> they'd be, yeah. lucky, they'd be yeah. lucky if they can come back to that venue after that. No, I'm pretty sure the venue burned to the ground <laughs> immediately afterwards. Or pretty close. Wow, wow. And we're showing footage for the guys on the video of the, uh, uh, there's a video floating around of Jock Sam- Samson gets thrown off the scaffold at War 12 uh, from this past weekend. Already, already up for four, over 400 views. Um, crazy. And, for, uh, he'll for be an old school, for an old school guy who does a hip toss with a finish. I've seen that man do crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's one of those guys that comes out, he comes up with a bull rope and we're like, Oh, this is like old Dick Murdoch wrestling or something. Right. Classic, uh, you know, uh, uh, redneck guy and stuff, but then he takes it to the next level. You know, he's not just mimicking, uh, guys like that. It seems. No, God, no. Like I said, I, I, we were, we're watching a thing of him on a scaffold. Uh, there was barbed wire boards, and I've seen him go through fire. So uh, he's uh, he'll do whatever, man. 
Yeah. So, so okay, so he had this call out for you. I, I think you, you guys are facing each other here uh, in a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I mean, first time ever we've ever wrestled each other is going to be coming up uh, in March in Rochester, New York here for Upstate Pro Wrestling. Mm-hmm. And that one should be, uh, I don't know, one for the ages, I guess. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Jack. I always have been a big fan of Jack since I first met him, and he called me nothing but Eric Embry. What? <laughs> we do resemble each other slightly. Okay, okay. Um, wow. Wow. Jock Sampson. Yeah, yeah, he was a, uh, a early, early guest for us, and it's still one of the most controversial we've had on the show. Um, oh, I believe it. I did a, uh, for a... AIW, they had like a, a dating game thing, mm-hmm. and it, I was on a panel, and it was me, Jock Sampson, and I, I can't even remember the third. It might have been Tim Donst, but I don't know, maybe it was ACH. I don't know, but either way, Jock Sampson's answers for this dating game were the craziest stuff I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> wow, amazing, amazing. Amen, you got any more questions here before we go to our uh, finisher? <laughs> well, I, I didn't have anything particularly. I um, I got a lot of answers just out of that last one. <laughs> I, I guess it, I guess it's a good way to uh, get to our kind of. I guess so. Questions. Actually, actually, I, I, I just remember we have an extra question. We're going to start rolling into this. Um, so we mentioned, you know, you know, unfortunately, a lot of guys when we talk to them on on these shows in the Indies are like, "Oh, I can't watch Raw," and when a lot of our us as fans are the same way too, right? But one question is, uh, uh, you know, Colin, what are you watching in wrestling in these days? Like, what's really uh, you're, you're kind of digging Indies, mainstream, whatever? Oh man, I try to watch. In an average week, I try to watch a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Um. I've, in fact, on Twitter been watching a match a day and, like, writing a little something about it. So today, for example, I watched Owen Hart against Vader from uh, One Night Only, 97. Oh, wow. Nice. But, I mean, a couple weeks ago I watched, uh, like, Fit Finley against uh, Alex Wright's dad, Steve Wright, from Germany in the 90s. Uh, I mean, uh, I like to watch... uh, I watched the... Good Dr. Death Steve Williams against Scott Norton match recently from like 2000. So I watch whatever. I watch uh, what I watch is all over the boards. I like to watch indies. I like to watch my PWGs Mm -hmm. and such. Who doesn't? But I watch Ring of Honor. Uh, I do watch NXT. It's the uh, the WWE programming that I do make sure to try and tune into. Mm-hmm. Uh, three hours is just too long for my attention span. I won't lie about it. And it's not that necessarily I think it's bad because I can't say that because I just don't have the attention span to try and sit through three hours. Uh, but yeah. yeah, no, I watch uh, New Japan or CMLL or, you know, stuff that I grew up on. I try to, I try to keep... Uh, Keep active and watch a little bit of everything. Wow, I, I'm I'm pulling up on your uh, Twitter feed here this old uh, uh, Fit Finley versus Steve Wright match. Um, wow, I love the concept. So it's hashtag match a day that you're doing over here. Yeah, I missed a couple of days because I was out of town in the middle there, but I'm uh, I'm gonna have to try and do more. That Steve Wright against Fit Finley match is crazy. Well, yeah, I just saw a headstand. <laughs> yeah, and probably the uh, probably the coolest hip toss I've ever seen in pro wrestling. Yeah, a crazy handstand uh, into a, a front handspring, and then he uh, grabs an arm bar and throws like an arm bar uh, style hip toss. It's great. Wow. I can't Later wait. Later to... in the match, my favorite, my favorite part of the whole match, Steve Wright leapfrogs the, like, the hands on his shoulder, leapfrogs over the referee to get back at Finley. <laughs> so, is this a preview of your next match with Tommy Dreamer? Yeah, probably. Hey, everybody, <laughs> don't watch that match because I'm going to do all that stuff. In, uh, in, my, in a match with Tommy Dreamer someday, so you're not going to want to watch that one because then mine's going to be very uh, unexciting. <laughs> definitely, definitely, awesome. Uh, well, and of course, the the usual ender question we have is um, uh, by the way, the thanks to Matt Carlin's actually came up with the, that question to put in the in the uh, uh, rotation there. Um, so uh, you know, what is the best and worst thing uh, uh, about working the Indies over the years, Colin? Oh. The best and worst thing about working for the Indies. Oh, I don't know. I guess the worst part is sometimes having to get in a car uh, for longer than you were even at a show. <laughs> Oof, uh, that yeah. was always the worst. Uh, I, your body's just not meant to do that. 
uh, like driving six hours to a show, you're only at the venue for, you know, three, four hours, and then you get back in your car and drive the six hours back. You know, mm-hmm. I always thought about that. I was watching, um, I was actually watching um, one of the other local indies here uh, in the area and, and seeing somebody come out and do like a three minute match and realize they came from like Cleveland or Buffalo or, or something, you know, a couple states away to do a, a three minute match, more or less. Um, yeah, but, it's crazy when you really think about it. And uh, yeah. after. Uh, doing that, even if like you had a longer match, that's even worse because your body takes all that punishment and whatnot, and you know stuff that your body's not used to doing, and your body's not supposed to do on a regular basis. And then getting into uh, a five-seat car with four people and just have your body cramped up and compact mm-hmm. after what you just did to it is uh, sometimes a bit nuts. So that would be the worst. Wow. And. Uh, I don't know. The uh, I love wrestling and I love indie wrestling. Uh, the best is just getting to do it every night and uh, and you know being healthy enough to do it the next night and the night after that and the night after that and the night after that. Awesome, awesome. Well, um, let people know. Uh, I know, of course, you're going to be work- here with the uh, IWC. They were just announcing matches. I think tonight here on on their Facebook page. I, I see you're going to be in a three way. With Alex Daniels and Dravico, uh, actually Alex, yep. Alex Daniels, I just saw at VOW uh, over the weekend. I know I've seen him a couple other places. Really, really cool talent out there. And Dravico is just a deformed Power Ranger, and I, and it's everything you would imagine. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, Alex Alex Daniels, I believe, is a Gargano uh, trainee, Johnny oh, Gargano trainee. That makes sense. And uh, Dra- Dravico is uh, an IWC uh, school graduate. I've worked with both of them on a. Uh, uh, not in a wrestling sense before, but uh, on the shows and, and helping them out with matches before. So it'll be interesting to, uh, to tie one up with the two of them. Awesome. Where else are you going to be? Oh, man. Everywhere. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I got uh, uh, next Friday, I'll be in Cleveland, Ohio for AIW, Absolute Wrestling. I'm a tag. Kiri. Uh, and BJ me teaming Cheech of the team of uh, Two Infinity and Beyond. That's us. Um, so that'll be a good. That, that's stacked load. It's gonna be great. It's got Kurt Hawkins against Cliff Compton. Come oh, on! Wow, wow. <laughs> I, I, AIW always has crazy cards up there. Um, like yeah, I, I wish... AIW, AIW has Dennis Stamp on that card. <laughs> Dennis Stamp <laughs> will be there. He is booked. He has He's been booked. booked. So it I got that. Uh, I'm supposed to be doing uh, Juggalo Day the day after that in Detroit. Oh, nice. But that's I think right. If you, I think that's sold out already. That's right. If you don't I, have I, tickets, I... you're SOL. And then the weekend after that, I'll be uh, Providence, Rhode Island for Beyond Wrestling. So Nice, nice. That's right. I did see you at the gathering, didn't I? Yep. That's right. It, you sure did. That's how, the craziest thing i ever done in my entire life. How is it wrestling at 3 in the morning? <laughs> it's, it's not. It's Yeah, it's crazy. I remember, uh, so not to spoil anything, but I did do a kaiju show. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I'm in a, I'm in a, a large costume, mm-hmm. and I'm getting ready to go out, and somebody offers me Molly. And I'm like, I'm in most of a giant uh, foam outfit getting ready to get in the ring with a can of soup and a half raccoon, uh, half, uh, I don't remember what that thing is, uh, but no, no. <laughs> Wow. Wow. wow, it's crazy enough. I mean, I saw, I saw fans being fed uh, Boogeyman's worms on the final night. I mean, that's... Jesus! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think I think Dreamer is... I forget who Dreamer took on, but he was the main event the final night of Bloody Mania. And and it was like, I'm like, I'm like it's like 4.30. The sun's coming up soon. When, how, when are we getting... What? I have to go to my... I have to go to my hotel. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. It's, I it's love awesome. the gathering. I hope I get to do it again this year because it was so much fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you've never, listen, if you've never experienced a gathering of the Juggalos in your life, you need to. This is for everybody, everybody out there. You, at least one time in your life, need to experience the gathering of the Juggalos. That's that's what happened. I took uh, uh, two girls with me that um, had never been to even an ICP show before. And me, a long-time 
ICP fan, did a website for the longest time. Uh, oh. you know, it was an experience, definitely an experience. So, Dorg, man, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have taken you for a big, uh, for a big juggalo. Oh, the biggest man. <laughs> What's so your my pe- favorite? My favorite one is uh, I rode down with Pepper Parks. Turns out Pepper Parks huge juggalo. Oh Cracks wow. Me out. Oh yeah, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have uh, pointed him out as one. No, no, we were we were trying to go just like roam around. Yeah, and he's like, "Hey, you guys go roam around. I'm gonna watch the watch these shows." He knew like every act. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's all. Hey, there's nothing like being covered in fago while there's a thunderstorm going on above you. Um, there's literally nothing like it in the world. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Great experience. Great, great. The best. Um, that's 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 my uh, that's my uh, my, uh, my my religious experience right there. Was was doing that. So, awesome. Um, so, Colin Lenny at Extremely Cute on the Twitters. Not on Facebook, as we learned. You'll get a Wikipedia picture that we're using tonight on the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Facebook's overrated. I got a Twitter, at Extremely Cute. I do a little match-a-day thing on there. Sometimes I put up some Instagram pictures. But uh, usually that's the way you can figure out uh, where I'm going to be. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Or you can call me. My home number is... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> anyways, um, <laughs> thank you very much, Colin, for uh, coming on. Always uh, good to see you at the shows at IWC and talking with you, of course. And now I have your theme music on my on my computer. Uh, <laughs> uh, Which theme music? I don't know. Whatever you used up in Clearfield that one time when we were trying oh, to get perfect. it off of your email. So, um, but yeah, before before you went evil, Colin, on us up there. So I went to a show recently, and they said. Uh, what theme music do you want? We have your WWE theme music and your Ring of Honor theme music. And I said, neither. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Go check them out. And in the meantime, Eamon, we got so much indie wrestling to talk about. Absolutely. So there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in the indie wrestling world. You know, you know, when you mentioned it earlier, you got into, we got into a bit of discussion on the Mayhem show, a very brief discussion. Uh, that, can, that concerned the indie wrestling world. That I kind of wanted to maybe get into a bit more, dive dive in deeper. Like, hey, this is where I get concerned because I know I get a little ranty about some like some of these things, and they're like, "Oh, who the who the hell is this guy?" You know, he's not a wrestler. I'm no, oh, I'm not a wrestler. You but know. you are in production. But I am in production. Deal with your medium. I've been doing this for a while. I like to think. I don't. I mean, you know, in some. I mean, like. Uh, this also comes from a consumer point of view too. I mean, right, 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 right. Wait, 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 okay. Here's so are we are we which which rant which part of the rant are we going off on? I would lead me lead me into this. Okay, so we kind of got into a discussion uh, uh, during the mayhem show about uh, it started about uh, vignettes, talking about our favorite vignettes. Um, yes, one of the great questions by Dustin, who writes in yes. regularly with the show and usually kills half the time on our show because of one's wonderful questions that we just go <laughs> off on. Um, but but sort of talking about how you know doing different things uh, you know really aids and we, uh, one of the things we mentioned was Enzo Amore and Big Cass on NXT doing like the iPhone promos where they're like on location and stuff like that um, and, and we sort of got into a discussion about promos and 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 that kind of stuff and doing things that are different and uh, not doing not everything that you post online has to be a three four five minute promo about you talking about your opponent and your upcoming match or whatever mm-hmm. it can be you know something and it could be something that hold people's attention i i think people don't take that into account sometimes is that right. they, you know it's about holding their attention right uh, and there's um so so basically for me I, I mean i'm thinking not even from a wrestling aspect i'm more thinking like i said kind of consumer but like i um to get an outside wrestling perspective, I've taken a few projects over my time as a video editor, and and and, and, and people think, oh, he works for himself, whatever. He's a fucking noob, whatever. Um, but no, I have done professionally video editing for a company for six years before I struck out on my own. You know, yeah. I understand that. I've dealt with crap and turned it into a nice shiny piece of video. Um, it's a very unexciting video because of some of the content, unfortunately. But um, you know, it's not like I kind of came up, bought a camera, and decided I'm going to film pro wrestling. You know, right. um, I've been doing this since I was a teenager. Like since I was a teenager, and have been <laughs> I make my living off of this. Um, so timing, for instance, 
uh, not not just timing and then switching and, and you know because we live switch. I don't post edit anything for the most part unless there's a show that I can't get to because of a double booking, uh, which I think I have two this year potentially. Um, usually it's like four or five, but uh, uh, you know it, it's a. Uh, so we look at the promos. You know, I sat there. Uh, I'd like to talk more about. We talk about uh, vicious outcast wrestling. We talk about a lot on the show. Uh, first, first live show I've been to since May. I caught a little show they did uh, in Jeanette. That was the all women show. Um, and uh, I'm really impressed with their presentation. They got this video screen. I actually got just a message about you know what some of the software they use for that. And I'd love to integrate that into what we're doing with IWC a little bit. Um, and maybe some other projects outside of wrestling. To be honest. Wouldn't it be great if I have a Titan Tron for you guys coming on the podcast behind me? No. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm sitting there and even like at IWC, we had this promo, which was I thought was great as far as like a promo that was on the web. A little long, but it caught my attention because of the content. Crimson does it, it, a great, great thing, I think. We played that in front of the live crowd on the video screen at the last IWC show. Because um, they're like, well, we gotta get that out there so people. Like, he's gonna show up here. We, they gotta know that this is in the air. This is something that could be happening. Girls, you know, people that don't know, you know. So I get that. But even, even like halfway through it, I heard somebody in the crowd yelling, "Why are we watching this now?" <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah. Or you know, like I'm like, you know, I'm thinking the same thing. Like it feels long there. Even the little video things, like it was like, I, like I, I remember just turning to to Justin, be like, this should have been half the length. Because it's just doing the the the, the kind of lottery random thing like the old uh, raw draft, right? And it was uh-huh. like you could cut that in half, you know, because it was thirty seconds total, right? And and that the reveal happens at twenty. Twenty seconds is forever. There are some people that will say uh, let the entire minute and a half of a Metallica intro go before yeah. they come out the curtain fucking kill I, I, me, man. That, that, you that, that fucking kill before. me I, I hate swearing on this show but as, you're... as someone who has to as to like put together people's music intros are i do can i do you, we're cool with swearing right intros are a bitch i just well i just <laughs> dropped the f-bomb uh like nothing and i try not to I'm, i apologize i try to keep this so a little clean but i'm really i i i, I had a wrestler actually at a last inspire show like um I, I sort of re, i sort of research people's music just so i have everything prepared yeah and uh, uh i basically told them like hey i just want to make sure that this was your song and they're like yeah but make sure to cut, like start it at a certain point or whatever i was like yeah i listened to it like i cut it at a certain point so it wasn't like a long intro or and- any other thing can i do a side thing on that um <laughs> there's um uh, i mean it really works for an intro um this is a you know, okay generation debt they come out to this music at rwa and there's like this uh talking that happens like radio chatter talking thing to go into it which is really cool when they come out and you're anticipating and it's only a sliver i feel too long but it kind of fits it fits and sets up the atmosphere especially with what we do with them visually on top of what they're already doing amazing stuff of course um but when they've just won this dramatic match da, 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 and we hit the music and there's talking for 10 seconds before we hit the boom, 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 you know the, the good music like you need to um and this is i'm sorry i I hate to call this out but (laughs) but wheels i was gonna have this conversation with you but now i am um like like have you know wwe doesn't have the full intro thing if there's something weird you know yeah they have they they have have you have intro and they have an intro version and they have a cut they they have an outro version so it bumps right in there uh hulk hogan's music doesn't start with i am a real man like that that slow build at the beginning that works really well when you're waiting for him to come out of the the curtain like when he comes out, you gotta go dun dun dun. Like when he gets the pin, one, two, three, ding ding ding, bump bump bump. Or I, 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 if the, I recall, the intro, it, the intro needs to serve a purpose. Right, the intro needs to be the intro, and then that's it. Right. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, Matt Hardy's music slops. I could slam a tornado, not the build-up loading screen to his Windows Media Player <laughs> gimmick. Right. I would love it. <laughs> Really well, it would be great if it did that. It was a replay from win. the match, and then it was a Matt fact about the match that he just had. You know, I mean, a lot of prep. But anyways, outside the box, of that where are we, the hell are we going about that? But we're going uh, the, the, the so, intricacies so of production. Back to pro, back to promos though. But something like that, and this is something I did several times at that IWC show, and this is a little work on. I mean, this is all a lot of people doing this. 
uh, you know, not with the assets that should be available, you know, to a lot of people doing this, trying to make something feel bigger with what they have on hand. I think IWC does a really good job at that, you know. Um, I think uh, VOW does a really good job at that, right? Um, Mm -hmm. You see on the video you've talked about, you know, and how that looks and everything. And we showed stuff from IWC tonight, you know, know, a little bit from VOW. Um, I think that's 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 when you're doing it right when you're taking that little bit and like making it's like okay you know it's not wwe no but it doesn't look like yeah a crappy indie you know as much as as it could especially you know covering up you know this is not a gymnasium you know you dark it's a little thing it is little things things. it's the things that if in the end of the day you could be like well if we didn't use this it's not gonna (laughs) Okay, it, apparently it's at, the, it's at the end of the day. Will says, the the says thirty two seconds into the intro to the mu- then music. Yeah, wow. thirty two twenty like if it, it it can't be more than like No, no, it can't seconds. be more than like ten seconds. Ten seconds yeah. is an eternity. But then we go to the promos. Like so like again, I'm sitting there through those promos and those videos as we're playing them, right? And and I feel like I feel like my mind I'm gonna get in a little spatial thing. I feel like my mind production wise is on a little bit of a um, um, different speed than everybody else. As I'm just a spectator watching this thing sitting back, you know, and I feel like I got that of VOW watching them. Um, and like I get like, okay, if I'm bored, the crowd's bored, you know, and yeah. and I and so if I'm behind the switcher going, if I'm bored, the crowd is twice as bored, exactly. right? Because I feel like I'm going at a different speed. Uh, is because I'm doing a lot of analyzing as i'm as i'm switching and doing the thing on screen and everything um there was uh a a kind of intro promo they played super long should have ended thought i was going to end at one point didn't end um and it's probably <laughs> only like a minute 30 it honestly was probably only about a minute 30 it was um uh i don't know do i want to call it out but <laughs> <laughs> but it was um um you know, it, 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 you, you think about promos in, in WWE. I think the longest promo in WWE, other than that intro that we were ranting about on the show yeah. for Wrestling Mayhem Show today, um, is Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Because Bray Wyatt That's goes true. on. I think it's intriguing. I think some people are getting bored with it. But I think I think his character kind of necessitates a longer promo. It does. It does. And, and that's why I, and I think... I, but even he's still not as long as some of these promos I see on the indies. No, he You're still right. isn't. Some of these guys, and I think it's really cool when we do the live backstage stuff. Like uh, Colin did a really good one uh, going into his match with Tommy Dreamer, for instance. Um, they did some fun stuff with Keith, Keith Hot and um, Dylan Bostic, I think his name is, with uh, Ray Lynn, uh, mm-hmm. who was also at VOW. I'm loving this guy the more i see him and i've now seen him at three different shows for three different groups and <laughs> everyone brings a little bit different and i'm really digging on him um but uh uh you know it, you know i mean how many times and you've seen this you've seen this same i anyway, know we talked about this on the show how many <laughs> times have you gotten a promo from somebody that's like four minutes long uh, I'm not gonna. I won't name names. Four minutes uh, long. There was. I, I won't name names. Uh, I think you can go to you know find it if you if you find. I don't think there's a name it. in names. I think go look up indie wrestling promos, and it's most of them out there. Uh, I'm gonna. I I'll just say this. I did get a promo once from somebody, um, in in preparation for a show, that was 11 minutes. That's too much. One person talking about a match for 11 minutes. That, think about that and was there anything else there's a guy in front of a camera in front of the camera doing nothing interesting but talking about the thing there's one thing being a match. talker a talker in this business but i mean the first thing you're going to learn about if you go to nxt is how to cut that down a little bit how to talk yeah. for tv how to hey, make your 11 point. minutes 11 minute promo that's a sixth of nxt's programming yeah exactly <laughs> exactly right and how much do they pack in there there's a reason it feels like it's a great fast show you know and versus yeah. the raw is like well let's just stretch this one out a little bit you know hey maybe you have more luck on raw with that honestly um Fair but uh you know, it, it, everything's a quick hit. You know, this is an MTV generation, and there's talking, and then there's there's a there's a uh, um, uh, 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 monologue. <laughs> you know, right. um, that's what you podcast for, guys. <laughs> 
I talk Ding. for I you know what and and, uh, and and now I'm realizing how much I'm shooting myself in the foot there because you realize I sit down and talk for ten minutes every morning. <laughs> Uh, even more so because I try to do uh, these two-minute things for a Mayhem show and Awesome Cast. But it's so much different than a promo, I think. It is. I, yeah, that's true. I mean, I um, I don't concern the myself. The promo is to hype people. It, it's it's very much hype. Yeah, that's the other thing. Does this thing get me interested? Did I watch your 11-minute promo? And, and damn, I'm buying that DVD. Damn, I'm buying a ticket to that show. I got to see that. You know, Um I think that's lost on people, and I think that's a uh, a lot of times in this. You know, I, I man, I saw the same thing in rap music when we did the show. You know, with some of these groups around here, are they kind of are they seeing the forest for, from the trees? Like, like they're worrying about this. I'm about this promo. We're gonna talk this. I'm gonna get all these details and and all of this stuff. It was like, yeah, man, but why why do I care? You know, I'm not a guy that watches your thing and knows the complete history of. Uh, let's see, random wrestler that's only works in Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I, I look at it from look at it from my point of view. My my job is to a lot of times in the opening of a match deliver the story fast for for people that have never watched the show before, mm-hmm. and and tell them what's going on and 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 do it succinctly and quickly enough to where we can get into the match and they can focus and 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 you know that's that's a it's a it's a it's not easy. It is absolutely not easy. But it takes time and it takes work, you know, put in to to get to that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you, you, okay, take take a look or take a look at some of the pros. Um, I'm just kind of uh, thumbing through this stuff here, and I see VOW has a, uh, a, a two minute, not even two minute, talk with of uh, Rhino talking about his match with Shane Douglas. So presumably this was upcoming or something. With uh, actually, this was for the 2015 Rumble party that they had, which I heard was great. We, we talked about that's where uh, Facade took on. Actually, even this, I'm looking at this. There's transitions. <laughs> and there's no need. That's the thing. There's no need for you know Rhino to cut a five minute promo. Yeah, yeah. You you know who Rhino is. You know who Shane Douglas I, is, assumedly. And I've worked with. Uh, I did promos with Prime Wrestling, and again, it's one of those like, hey, don't do a long promo. This is TV. Right. Yeah. I got to work with Rhino on that. I got to work with Facade on that. And it was it was a lot of uh, it, you You were at that venue for resolution. Uh, it was um, and, you know, that's like you see the big train bridge kind of right. up behind there. I took some cool pictures on Instagram that year when I went down for that. Um, and we had fun to make everything look different. Right. Uh, uh-huh. Make everything visually interesting. Make sure everything's short and concise. You know, I wrote it was a minute. The longest thing I think I recorded. There was this big long thing that happened, but it was so good and so emotional. And it was two people involved, um, and I'm sure you can find it somewhere on YouTube. Uh, a great thing between Gregory Iron and Zach Gowan, where Gowan's I, or uh, 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 um, Irons is being, I think, interviewed if I recall, and t- is talking about and talking about his his relationship with Zach and 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 what that meant to him. And then you look, and there, there's Zach kind of looking over him. On this, uh, this, these stairs that kind of went above where he was sitting, and he just happened to be there over, overhearing, and he just runs him down, and he's the biggest bully, and it was, it was compelling, you know. Um, but again, you know, somebody you know, that's been in the game for a while and knew, knew exactly what he's doing, you know. Exactly. Oh um, man, yeah. hell, on the, he worked with the best, very literally, <laughs> you know. Um, there's a reason he loves coming on the uh, uh, video game show because we don't ask him how Hulk Hogan is, um, but. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you know, I mean that, that, that I mean that's that's kind of that side of that. Um, um, look at if you watch back your own promos, try to look at it objectively. Think about that length. Think about retention, right? Yeah. Um, big thing I'm doing with YouTube is retention. These videos, these long videos. I know nobody watches an hour video that we do here on YouTube. No. Right? <laughs> I, I know that. I know that the numbers are low. They're what they are. But they're they're doing it on the podcast. I know they are. They listen. They listen longer than they'll watch us talking heads do this thing. And we're doing. That's why we're doing little things. Um, and I'm kind of thinking of those shows, those day daily shows, like a promo, right? I'm yep. tr- and, and, and I'm I'm early. I'm only second week into it. Um, but I'm trying to kind of restructure that and think around that. And and. In that case, you know, I'm not trying to sell, put your butts in seats, make you buy the DVD. I'm trying to get you like, wow, that was really, you know, well, hey, they're cool. I got a news item. I'm kind of getting into podcast talk here, I know. But, but I mean, but no, it's, but like, it's, it's so, almost, I mean, 
it's kind of I, I I know I said before promo stuff's different, but yeah. There's stuff you can learn learn from the presentations. The presentation's still presentation, you know. You gotta, yeah. you know I mean, what there's are there's a your, lot of basic principles. What are your talking that, points, you know? Yeah. But there's basic principles that go into that 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 work for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and they mm-hmm. work with all mediums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. That's my little rant. I don't know if it made sense, uh, but uh, or whatever you think of that. If you were, <laughs> if you have any thoughts on that, I mean, we do have the lines are open. Four one two two zero six WMS zero. And your time's the rest. Oh, we got a good one. We got if Wheels is telling me you got a promo from um, got a promo from from somebody for Fury. Perfect. Fifty three seconds. Perfect. Perfect. In, in, in and out. Perfect. In and out. That's it. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com if you have any let thoughts it, on this let topic Let us know what well. you think on the topic. Honestly, email us. And yeah. Email, um, you, know, uh, you know, figure out what you guys think. What do you, do you like the longer promos? Do you, do you prefer, like, are you with us and prefer short sixing? And there's a matter stuff? of taste. I'm sure there's some people that do dig that, but I think the masses, it's not going to work. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, you, it's not going to work when you go to WWE, I tell you that much. And that's, I mean, let's be honest, that's where everybody's, uh, for the most part, aiming for, unless you're a Cole Cabana. But even that, you know, um, he knows how to do that. So, yeah, let us know. Uh, 412-206-WNS0 for the hotline. Good times at Um and, and again, if you're, I, it, seriously, and, 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 you know, and there's some people that think this, you know, if you're a fan or if you're even a wrestler, you know. That have yeah. your opinion on it. I think we're full of shit. Let us know. You know, I, I'm curious. <laughs> tell, to, us, tell us we don't know what the fuck. I'm really. About. I, I have, I've had some great conversations with uh, a lot of the wrestlers about stuff like that. It's really cool to get their their view on, on stuff as a wrestler. You know, versus me. And, you know, even though I'm in production, I consider myself a fan. I mean, that's me. I'm die hard as hell if I'm doing this shit. But uh, <laughs> but but you know, I, I, I in my mind, I'm still a fan. Just very fortunate to be working around the people that I do. Um, and, 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 uh, and I try to be humble in that as much as I can, but I have my opinions because I'm a fan after all. And this is the internet and we're allowed to, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. anyways, <laughs> vicious outcast wrestling this past weekend. Again, uh, I do want to mention a little bit more that, you know, fantastic. Well, there's their YouTube. That used to be, this is actually footage from our last show. No, that's Rhino. I didn't, <laughs> I lost the video. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> um, but uh, again, yo, know, love the production. Really cool seeing it in person. Um, I, I'm like, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, why is the entrance so far away from the ring? Then I looked, and I was like, oh, it looks better on the on the video, and it does. Actually, it does uh, completely. So I mean, it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. That crowd is insane. Um, you know, not quite as insane as RWA, but uh, uh, you know, definitely definitely very very interesting and such a great group of talent i got to see kind of a friend of the show dream match in uh, g raver versus facade um my wife went with me wife of the show um and uh so so one interesting thing that happens is that we're very familiar with a lot of the roster of vow between the people we've worked with with rwa mm-hmm. with iwc it's a mix of that and even guys that actually like guys and iwc are just in a different mix right um and we talked to, and actually, you know, guys, we talked to on the show. Um, I think Aiden Vale and his Evale character, as as part of the Generation Dead Congregation uh, group that's that's formed there, teaming with Gory against the tag team champions. Wrap your heads around this: Andrew Palace and Chess Flexor. Oh wow! Which Colin sells was a Flex Palace, I think it was. Um, you know, that seeing that configuration of people she was so familiar with, she just started laughing. She, she, she's like, "This is breaking me." You know, <laughs> I think it's kind of like a, uh, a I, I think in her mind, and I think I think this a little bit, too. It's kind of like, well, I've watched I've watched. Uh, oh, what's a good example? I've watched um, um, uh, Barry Darso be smashed for so long in WWF. And now he's a uh, blacktop bully. But I kind of recognize him in WCW. Is that it? or Repo Man? No, yeah, the, I got that. you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, that's kind of a out there kind of thing but he's like he's this here now i go across the street to this and he's that you know um um oh mark marrow johnny b bad there you go no, exactly. you know something like that you know or he's, a, he's like, an effeminate dude and now he's a boxer yeah exactly you know it's like this this you know that's it was just more that configuration the biggest actually the biggest thing was was aiden vale as eval uh we had a lot of fun with that so um 
anyways <laughs> uh but no no great great show um like i said i mentioned the scaffolding situation on the wrestling ma'am show they're they're, set, they're having a scaffolding match and again i mentioned on that they had a prince of darkness match and messi kept going and was like wait wait are they really doing what what is a prince of darkness match and this is a show and i i remember talking to the to the, the, the booker before and i was just like you know one of the first first shows i'm like dude you got a lot of gimmicks like three-way casket match like um you know and stuff like like they made up stuff they they had to have made up loves may have heard heard a good idea somewhere um that we, we matt tremont when he was on the show uh they were going to have that like like barbed wire lattice match you know oh, yeah, and we yeah. showed like the 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 uh illustration of what they did <laughs> you know i mean they're doing creative things different things that nobody else is doing i think that's really smart of them um and again they're doing a scaffold match to me is like is that in this venue? Because I was a little confused on what dates were what coming up. I know they're doing one in West Virginia, which is cool. They're getting out of like just there in Connellsville, and they did like the rumble the rumble thing up uh, north of the city too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and yeah, I talked with a lot of guys uh, in charge over there, doing a lot of really cool stuff. They I think they got a really good uh, head on their shoulders about um, um, you know where they're at and where they're going and, and what's working and not working and you know and they they definitely um, I feel stick their neck out there trying stuff, you know. Right. Um, they've settled into a look and feel certainly, uh, since the summer, um, at the right spot, they're doing local TV on the local cable access. So there's two, two places doing TV in the area, um, which is, re- you know, that's really cool to see, you know, I mean, I, it's not someplace I'm targeting for, for the products I'm working with. Um, yeah. but you know, uh, but you know, I, I'm glad to see it, you know, good for them, you know? Um, and, and, and the stuff looks good, you know, even the guys, I, I, I say, I, I mentioned here locally on this show, I, I vocally ran down PWX when they were first on TV because I looked, I thought it looked like crap, but they got better, you know, right. they, they, we actually did have that conversation last week about production value and thinking about that. Um, so we should do a seminar on starting a wrestling promotion, oh, you know, geez. like, 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 like <laughs> not well. just you and me, like, let's actually get a promoter involved. That's actually done the, 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 what I considered the hardest freaking work out there other than the guys taking bumps um as far as the business side of things but uh like we should just do like this is how you should start it don't do x y and z just trust us on this you know but anyways it'll be awesome i want to do it i want to do like a podcast pittsburgh for wrestling promoters you know (laughs) (laughs) but the problem is since they're aspiring wrestling promoters they're not going to have money to do anything to travel anywhere do anything anyways so (laughs) anyways um I, I don't know. I've said enough. Uh, what else is going on in indie wrestling? Uh, that uh, it's, 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 give me a happy note, Eamon. The happy note, the happy note stuff for me at least is, is stuff going on in our area in, in Texas. Uh, we do have an Inspire Pro Wrestling show this weekend, which I'm very excited about. Our undeniable event, uh, which is this Sunday, February 15th. Uh, a lot of big stuff on that card. Uh, a big main event of a, a six man tag team match of uh, uh, Dirty Andy Dalton. Uh, Davey Vega and Tim Storm against uh, Franco D'Angelo, Matthew Palmer, and Ray Rowe uh, making his big return to uh, professional wrestling after nice. his uh, motorcycle accident uh, back in August. And and that's going to be, I think, absolutely killer. Is that the first uh, show he's doing back? It's actually his second. This is his first weekend back. Um, okay. He'll be wrestling at a show on Friday, I believe, in Dallas okay. uh, for a company called VIP Wrestling. See, um, he's on an upcoming AIW show too, like on the. Dude's he show. is. I think that's two weeks. Okay. Or, or maybe more. The dudes on um, TV. But yeah, he's uh he, uh he's getting back in the swing of things, and then I, I'm excited because he he's been doing some really cool. You know, you know he's he's you know been amazing for so long, and you know that motorcycle accident, especially since he you know started with like a mono and stuff like that, like it couldn't have happened. I don't think at a worse time. Um, and, I mean, and it's good to have has, him back, though. This is it. I don't know. It's just because of where I'm at with indie wrestling and what I know and don't know. Like, there's a lot of names I don't know on here. I, I'll be completely honest. You know, no, other, definitely. Other than, but there's a lot of names I, of course, know from being on the show and hearing you talk about them all the time. Um, and if you talk them up, they got to be good because uh, I know what your opinions are on quality of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys got guys like ACH. You got guys like you girls like uh, Leva Bates or I would know as Blue Pants. Are you allowed to put Blue Pants on a flyer? Uh, we kind of we kind of advertise like when we promoted it, we promoted using her. Photo you, yeah, you used the photo dance. on Twitter. I know, saying, "Hey, remember her? Yeah, she's this yeah. chick, and we're having her here." I mean, yeah, I mean that's absolutely. smart. I mean, that's complete. You need to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I thought you know IWC's recent stuff was brilliantly timed. They had they announced Kevin yeah. Nash at Meadville when he showed up at Raw reunion a few weeks ago. It was like 
Jeez, man. You can't get any better than that, right? <laughs> so, exactly. It, it, it's really funny how some of that stuff works. Mm -hmm. uh, we also got a lot of uh, women's wrestling on that card. Uh, yes, uh, four, ma four matches in total of, of women's wrestling, which is about half the card, which is kind of something we try to go for. Is You know, you have as much wrestling on this card with women as there are in this area this month. Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, um, and typically that involves like the same six girls. Yeah, which I'm and impressed this, that we're up to six girls in the area. That, that's good, though. That, it's that's amazing, good. great. Because I, I think women women wrestlers sometimes in certain areas become <laughs> you're you're a women's wrestler and you fill a certain quota. Exactly, that sense? exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like um, affirmative action for indie shows. Exactly, you have to have at least one. You gotta um, at least have one flippy guy. You gotta at least have one guy that maybe shouldn't be in there because he's too big and not in the way you're thinking. You gotta have at least uh, two ladies. Um, mm -hmm. Whether they can wrestle was questionable. Um, 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 somebody who thinks he's a luchador, and even though he's a white guy in a mask, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, he can be Japanese, too. It doesn't matter. You at you least know. have to have a battle royal. Yes, yes. <laughs> Why are the fake Japanese and luchador guys like almost always gingers, I'm finding? Really? Like, I think Al Generico started a trend. I'm sorry. I'm going off. I, it's late, and I don't even Most know. likely. My, my filter's off at this time this is this, but, is this is probably the most interesting show or the most not interesting show that we do all night because of my lack of tired filter look i'm wearing a tie because we're incorporated that happened today and this is where we're at <laughs> i love it i love it so much it's official i have a binder yes indeed um but uh, uh i we actually have a lot of really cool talents on that card uh, uh leva bates as you mentioned uh blue pants from uh, nxt uh uh, we're also bringing in uh, Nicole Savoy from California, who's making some waves, uh, uh, going up against Athena. Uh, Vanessa Craven from Canada, who is awesome and six feet tall and um, amazing. Uh, so we're really glad to have her down. Uh, Mr. Touchdown from Chikara uh, uh, is coming down to wrestle uh, Steve Arino, for a friend of the Indie Mayhem show for the J Crown Championship. Uh, and, and there's a lot of cool stuff happening. So uh, if you want more information, you can go to inspireforwrestling.com. Uh, general admission tickets are still on sale. We have sold out of the front row, but uh, uh, you can still pick up GA tickets. Uh, get, I would suggest ordering them ahead of time uh, if you want to make sure that you don't get shut out because we have had ridiculous, ridiculous lines as of late. We, we're actually opening doors 15 minutes earlier this time around uh, to ensure that we get people in at a reasonable time, uh, which is which is I'm which I'm happy about. Um, and also, uh, last thing is that uh, as of today, actually, uh, you can officially pick up our, la our latest Inspire Pro Home video uh, event, uh, Battle Wars, which was our uh, show that we did with the guys from Chikara Pro. Uh, it's available on our video in various formats. It's also available uh, on Amazon. Uh, if, you, if you search that, it's through uh, Create Space. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that is undoubtedly one of my favorite shows I've ever been a part of. Uh, the talent on part top to bottom is amazing. Uh, everyone really stepped up their game and, and, and gave some really amazing performances. And it's, it's the proudest we've ever felt, uh, you know, from a wrestling show. And it was our biggest crowd up to that point. So uh, I hope people buy it. And I hope people enjoy it. Uh, go to smartmarkvideo on smbod.com to check it out. It's a great group of talent. I, I can't see why anybody who listens to the show would not enjoy it. Anyways, um, also in this area, we do have a little bit of uh, pro wrestling going on. Black Diamond Pro Wrestling. Uh, what they're, oh, geez, these guys, these guys are doing so much, so much. They, <laughs> there's so much content on their site. We talked about that before, but they got a show coming up this weekend that I don't have queued up. I just saw there was a show and clicked the link because I thought it was cool. Um, honestly, I think this is it. Uh, but it's going to be coming up uh, February 13th, Brilliant Ohio. Check it out. Uh, Chris LaRusso, who's been uh, popping up on Ring of Honor lately. Um, um, what else we got on here? Some other familiar names. Matt Kennard, I know I've seen around. Uh, Jay Flash has been doing some cool stuff. And I, he's, he's made some uh, kind of jobby appearances on TV, actually. So... Um, so uh, a really cool uh, group down there. You know, again, a lot of guys that we see all around this area as well. Uh, but strangely, not on this show. <laughs> so I'm used to like, oh yeah, I know that guy, that guy. But uh, uh, doing a lot of cool. Oh, they also have a show uh, in uh, Martin's Ferry, Ohio, February 14th. A lot of these coming up on their YouTube. Sometimes they're doing free live streaming. Uh, check out blind, uh, blackdiamondwrestling.com. 
um, for uh, more on that details on that. Brian Ball Brian Bowers is part of this. He's a, a Chris. Um, sorry, Lance Storm uh, trainee that we've had in IWC a good bit. A really cool, really cool kid. A really good wrestler. We only had like four matches in. He was impressing the hell out of me. It's it's amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Palace is on this one um, as well as. I saw another name. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so go check it out. BlackDiamondWrestling.com. So, yeah, that's all I got. Hey, man. Are we that's done? That's all I got. So that's all you done? Uh, check out the Instagram. Uh, Sting showed up in the studio just to point at you. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so go check that out. Uh, so with that, hey, thanks for joining us again. Let us know any of your thoughts. Uh, let us know if we pissed you off. Yeah, email us the thoughts on our, the, your thoughts on our discussion in that. In at, or, t- or tell us what's your favorite uh, indie wrestling promo you've seen. Exactly. Or what is some indie wrestling we should be talking about? 412-206-WMS0. Yes. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, to subscribe to this and other great, great shows that we're doing on this uh, Sogatron Media Incorporated Network. Uh, do I have to say that officially now? I have to talk to my uh, my counsel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... What else do we do here? Oh, check out basicsickness.com for the intro outro. Music, great free music from Pittsburgh. Supporting the show. Always been a big supporter. I, I used to play music with the guy. He was, he's, he's, he's an awesome, awesome dude. Still out there kicking. Ah, God bless him. Uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter and all the other stuff. Join us live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com around about 11 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll get started uh, eventually on the interview. Whatever we got lined up for the week. Or you can find us fumbling or finishing off the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Whatever that case may be. A loose, loose schedule, more or less. Just showing us all you. It's a lot of good stuff here. Amen at Amen to please inspirepro.com. Right? Did I get it right? Yeah. You did. I, I muted myself for a second. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> okay. And of course, uh, check out all the other stuff. Sorgatronmedia.com. Great, fun, yik yak uh, Valentine's video going on right there. I love Pro- that yik yak video. Really? I love it so much. ProWrestling.com, IndieWrestling.us. And we'll see you guys next week. Make sure you are supporting your independent, professional wrestling of a set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. for the taste of the Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.